the revocation of Article 370 is a no-nonsense message to Pakistan and the rest of the world that Kashmir is a part of India. Moving the resolution in Kashmir and Rajya Sabha, uh, Home Minister Hamid Shah on Monday had said that he was sure that the abrogation of Article 370 would end the bloody war in Kashmir. I'm joined by Major General Asthana, a noted defence and security expert. Uh, sir, do you believe that what Amit Shah said, that it will end the bloody war? Uh, my opinion is that this is step one. After that, of course, a number of steps would be required to ensure that it ends the so-called bloody war for the simple reason because there was a political patronage to the separatists and to the terrorists. Now, this political patronage is likely to go away because that political patronage had helped them in money laundering, in terror funding, in blooming the terror industry, in hijacking the education system and the madarsa system. And with these madarsas, the young products and the young recruits, which you see in Kashmir, they are the products of these madarsas where Wahhabi ideology was being taught. So there is, and everybody tried to check that, but that being a state subject could not be could checked. Not really, yeah. And yes. But now with, with, with Jammu and Kashmir being and Ladakh like, being separate union yeah, territories, unit territories, now you feel, because now it is actually the union's yes. territory, because yes. now the union yes. is yes. going to, yes. almost right. like Delhi is, yes. right? Yes, exactly. Where the police the, and yeah. everything is, is, yes. is controlled by the, by the center. Yeah. And there's another angle to it, which I must explain it to you. In case of Kashmir, because of the proximity with Pakistan, and because of proxy war, and I would now say hybrid war, when you add proxy to the line of uh, fire, uh, the control, uh, fire on line of control, right. it becomes hybrid war. Now, in this particular case, what had happened is that the Lord Order was getting mixed up with the proxy war because the Pakistani terrorists existed in Kashmir. Now, since they were existing in Kashmir, it was it couldn't be the total domain of the state itself. So central forces had to get in and central forces obviously need space and need authority to get in. But tell me something, sir, different. there is yeah. within the, the Kashmiri people and, yeah. and I've spoken to a few of them over the last uh, one, one and a half days, yeah. some friends of mine in the valley. Uh, they're not very enthused by this by this move. Some of them are, of course, but um, but those are largely in Jammu, but from the valley itself, um, they, they there is a sense of fear and a sense of what next? Okay. And how do you how do you define that? How do you how does the government get around that? And you know because the security situation in the valley before it gets better, as Amit Shah is promising, mm -hmm. major development over the next five years. Before it's get, going to get better, it's perhaps immediate fallout is likely to be worse. What do you expect as the immediate fallout of this move within the valley? See, as far as immediate fallout are concerned, the moment one forty four is removed. The moment the separatists, they get uh, elbow room to react. And at the same time, Pakistanis are also trying their best to induct more and more terrorists. Obviously, uh, Indian army and Indian security forces will try to stop them. But some people will get in because of the kind of terrain which we have. Right. So, a little bit effort of igniting the situation will definitely be there. And for that, we will have to be mentally prepared. I think... Whenever this uh, decision was to be taken, it was obvious that for a very short time, the valley will ignite to some extent. It's, and I think we were, melt yeah. we were mentally prepared for that. 70 years, we yeah, allowed yeah. this wound to fester. Yeah. And uh, it was supposed to be, Article 370 was supposed to be a temporary provision. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 70 years too long, uh, it, it sort of continued to be yeah, there. Yeah. Uh, lack of political will, obviously, being yes, one of the yes, reasons why yes. why why Kashmir continued yes, to be uh, yes. be granted a special status. Yes. Now that this has been done, how much of it do you believe has been precipitated by uh, Donald Trump's offer and reiteration of offer of mediation in Kashmir? One, two, also in terms of. Um, the promise of Mr. Trump to withdraw U.S. troops from Afghanistan. I would say, I won't grant too much to that. Although it has a little bit of impact because the moment President Trump initially offered to mediate right. and then repeated that offer, 
despite Indian uh, no denial, uh, haan, Indian denial and Indian yeah. clear message that we are not inviting you for mediation. Right. So despite that message, he's again repeated the offer. This is a factor to some extent because this was also uh, matching with the timing of our parliament, parliament session. session yeah. Now, in this parliament session, a little bit of extension and with the government getting a little more confidence after the talaq was through, government got a confidence. At the same time, uh, it was wise for us as in India and as a country before these outside mediators and so-called self-styled mediators start muddling the issue further, let's kill the issue. Right. And I think everything matched in such beautiful manner that this was the right time and the right time was fully exploited by the government. What is the strategic advantage you see as far as China is concerned? Of course, as far as Pakistan is concerned, uh, because Pakistan is obviously going to try and take take this to the UN and they have already started making the right noises. Do you believe that uh, we might falter somewhere on the constitutional uh, constitutionality of this move? See, I'll take your first question. As far as Pakistan is concerned and they're taking the case in UN, uh, let me put it that in UNSC, the case has got no standing. UNSC resolution, the first point was that Pakistan was supposed to vacate POK and Gilgit Baltistan right. and that Sakram Valley was not supposed to be given to China. That is the first basic premise which they have faltered already. already yeah. So as far as India is concerned, they are going to UN, it makes no difference at all. Now coming on to our local community where that is the legal community and the legal brigade which we have to face. Now in that case, the provisions were quite clear to say that the president can make an amendment. This was firstly a temporary provision as uh, Home Minister had brought out Absolutely. a number of times. Right. It was a temporary provision and there is no dispute on that. Now, the only thing was that if the parliament was in session and if the Kashmir assembly was in session, it was supposed to be passed by both. That was the uh, requirement. The second issue was that Maharaja, when he signed the instrument of accession, he had said, as per the will of the people, of the people. and he said, any amendment has to be done, it should be done with my concurrence. Right. And my concurrence, the Sadre Azam's concurrence. Now, where does that power lie? Now, that is open to interpretation. That power today lies with the governor. governor. There is no parliament, in there is no Kashmir assembly, assembly in session. Yeah. So, who is the government of the day? It's the governor. It's the and governor. And therefore, they have exploited. So, the government, you believe, has taken that part. Uh, yes. But, but that is exactly the part which may also come up for challenge if someone decides to go to the Supreme See, Court and challenge this. it is this. open to judicial review. Right. I do not anticipate that the opposition parties are not going to go to Supreme Court. They will go to Supreme Court. But uh, the question is the process being followed. I think there is nothing wrong in the process which has been followed. It has first been passed in Rajya Sabha. So, considering both these issues, I am very sure that the procedural part we have gone through. And secondly, we have gone through parliament route. Now, imagine the parliament route, the most important thing regarding the parliament route is that it denotes the will of the people. And when we say it denotes the will of the people, it is national will. When this election was fought, BJP and the ruling party had put it in the manifesto. Yes, Article 370 it was, was very much It there. was very much there in the manifesto. Absolutely. The whole country wholeheartedly has voted for the party. That means the country was Support in total agreement that. that this must be revoked. Right. And it was also very clear that the vote share of the party which won the contest in Kashmir itself also increased. So, therefore, whether people may say whatever they want, the rumors, leave the rumors apart. People of Kashmir, they know that if no investment comes In to the, Kashmir, right. there will be no job and the only industry on which they can survive is the terror industry. So, all young boys have no other choice but to become terrorists or stone uh, That was the future they were looking at. 
Now, yes, there are views uh, because, be, because of these madrasa education and because of the tremendous amount of fear which has been put in the minds of the young people there that if 370 goes, heavens will fall on them and uh, perhaps they will be uh, totally decimated or the Muslim population will vanish and it will be uh, occupied totally by Indians uh, or by Hindus or something like that and all such kinds of uh, wrong rumors have been put there and I have served in Kashmir, I am, I am aware of that. As far as a normal man is concerned, it, he is hardly affected by 370 or 35 alpha, frankly speaking. It's more, uh, it's more the political it's, leaders. It's there only the political the... leaders who get benefited. It's the separatists who had the best of it. It's the terrorists who had the best of it. And it's some kind of the rich people who were uh, patronizing all the industries there. And all the industries, you like it or not, they were being rooted through these three families. Right. So that is, this was the group which was benefited by 370 and 35 alpha maximum. For a normal man, it was better if more industries come there and if they get integ integrated, they get the best of it. So you believe that 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 overall it's going to benefit the masses? Yes, they might I, not realize it right now. Yeah, they may not Immediate realize. implications yes, yes, therefore yes. may be a little dicey, but overall it's going to be beneficial Benefit. for, for, for the population. Yeah. I just want to have one last question and that is... What do you, I mean, the opposition obviously has gone to town say, likening the situation to Kosovo, to Syria, to even Palestine. What is your uh, view regarding this concern? You see the amount of atrocities which are being caused in Xinjiang. Despite all kinds of uh, cries which the Xinjiang and Uyghurs have been doing all over the world. The world is really not the concerned. The world is actually not bothered. Right. Except few statements being made in United Nations and uh, by UNHRC or something like that. Yes, because China is... Because uh, it is an internal matter. Exactly. You like it or not, it is an internal matter. Kashmir is an internal matter. Do you think the power of India, India, we are a strong country and we have the confidence that we are a strong country. Do you think we are going to let anybody on this earth meddle with our, our internal affairs? No question. So, whether... China likes it or not, Pakistan likes it or not, USA likes it or not. Nobody is meddling, is going, will be allowed to meddle in the internal affairs of uh, India. And the revocation of Article 370 and the bifurcation into two yeah. states is going to now, ensure exactly that. Yeah. Now, and coming to our own population, Kashmiris are our own, they are our own population. They are our own citizens, they are our brothers and sisters. We will have to convince them. Now, this is an exercise. That will be a this slightly be, long haul and, exercise. Huh, this absolutely. is a longer exercise. This will be followed by good governance. This will be followed by development. This will be followed by uh, reaching out to them. This will be followed by a counter narrative. A narrative, we will have to take them out of the narrative of Pakistan and the narrative of Wahhabis and the narrative of the separatists, which has been sold to them for so many years till now. We will have to take them out and from that, Taking them out uh, will take little time. Yes, and they will not be, suddenly yes. get all the confidence. You on are us. echoing. You are echoing uh, yes. our home minister, Mr. Amit Shah. In uh, you know he pro he said in the Rajya Sabha yesterday. Yeah. In five years' time, we will change the face and of of Jammu and Kashmir, and we'll ensure development that has never been seen before. And with that, we will leave you right now. We'll keep coming back to you with more. Keep watching HindustanTimes.com.